I'm yeah, sure. So. And I'm sure all of our listeners can guess what show that is. Shoot, Weak Hero. Well, listen, yeah. Weak Hero, the Weak Hero. <laughs> you didn't even make it far into Weak Hero. <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't do it. My man saw but chapter yeah. one. I was like, oh no, not for me. Yeah. So, Which is fair because I did that with High School DXT. I was like, oh no, not for me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Herbal Synergy Podcast. I almost fucked up the intro again. I'm your host, Sinji. With me, my co-host, Herbay. What up? What's going on, Herbie? How you doing today? You know, I'm doing swell. It's a uh, nice day. Cool. Sun's kind of out. I'm a fan really. of this kind of weather. Yeah, I like the cool weather. I like cool runnings. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sir, do you have a flavor this week? I do. I have flavors. Uh, I decided that I'm going to go. Do I want to go with Urumichi or do I want to go with uh, Tower God? You know what? I'll go with Tower God this week. Because uh, my man Khan has some serious fighting skills. Hand to hand combat, at least. You know, if he uh, if he had a real weapon, he might have actually won. But he wasn't really trying to fight. But hey, that's showbiz, baby. Hey. Yeah. What mm. about you, sir? My flavor this week is coming out of Hero Killer, the webtoon that I read weekly. And just give away my coins to, even though I do realize once you get all the fast pass chapters, you still got to wait weekly. So there's really no point in doing that. But when you want to yeah. know what happens and you have it in front of you, you know. But uh, Patience is a virtue. It's just like a collection of like last chapter and this chapter because my girl Iwa decided to infiltrate the hero society and try to become a hero and like she came in late so everyone thought she was a proctor for a hero test so they were kissing ass to her so then the real proctor showed up and then they made him take a test and then the test is like a scavenger her over the course of three days she realized that the real test is keeping what you find so she was like i'm just gonna chill for a day and sleep but then people came to attack her for embarrassing them because they were like catering to her. And like a badass, she was like, I was just going to chill today, but I guess I'm going to fight. And now I'm waiting for next week, next week's chapter, so she can fuck some shit up. Why don't you go ahead and get you some coins? Oh, I have coins. I'm, I'm caught up. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I it's currently fast pass Weak Hero. Uh, Hero Killer, Tower of God, and I haven't started that with Unordinary yet, because the mm. last chapter didn't leave me, and I was like, I want to know what happens next. Yeah. But uh, sad. I'm sad to say that I think solo leveling is coming to an end soon. The anti One Piece. And I'm I'm starting to collect. The re zero manga because I, I have to at this point. <laughs> yeah. Re zero. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Herbie's like unimpressed by all anime. Mm, no, I wouldn't say unimpressed. It's it's not bad. It's good. Not bad just... is not good. Yeah. I have a different skill than the other humans, but you know, it'd be like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, what do you want to start it off with? Hmm. Start it off with, let's do that Jujutsu Kaisen. There's not much to say on my end, but okay. Yeah. So I just sum it up briefly. 
that they add a rule that you can transfer points between players, and then he ends up giving uh, Yuji a point so that his tech, his curse technique move was not in effect because he didn't have, doesn't have any points. And then we also find out that Higuruma's last two points are from the judge and prosecutor he killed, and he plans to turn himself in for the murders. And then he says he can't stay with Yuji because he'll hate himself more. Because <laughs> I guess it's Yuji's virtuous nature. I don't know. He, no, it's because he realized that under the face of like similar circumstances, Yuji maintained to be a decent human being, and he gave in to his bloodlust. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. But, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, then Megami has a test with the guy that he passes. And he asks Megami if he knows what the ritual is for. He kind of gives him uh, a bogus answer, saying it's a ritual for cursed energies uh, for the player inside the barrier. And see some of the, he says something about um, Japanese people take him to the other side so they're no longer human. And then the man knows Kinjaku. And maybe he's like, oh, this is not what it's actually for. And there's other plans to play because he's like, what you what you told me, you know, based on number of players, skill level, and barrier roles, it's, you know, different. And then they find that it's just a transferal process for stimulating early growth and, like, the second awakening in modern-day sorcerers. And supposedly there's supposed to be a bombshell announcement to, to, to go. Um, and... That woman that brought Megami there just she was used to get people to to either join that guy or be like food for that guy for points or whatever. Yeah, she's a pawn. Yeah, so he says Megami says so join if he gets all the points. And then negotiations break down and they fight. So not much. Did get some information there, which isn't too bad. But yeah, so but it's the same with Children X too. Like it, when it's not when there's no fighting, there's such slow chapters that like don't really amount to much. Yeah, I, I well, I feel that Jujutsu did give us a little bit more information. Yeah, but Jujutsu was just one chapter, yeah, and it gave yeah. us more information than Children's Four that amounted to. But Jujutsu probably had like what. 20 panels around there. 21. Fucking Ch- Children X, we read four chapters, which totaled around 90 plus panels. And all you really got from that was former baseball player turned Children, sinker Children. The middle, everything in between that literally meant nothing well you you do get the the sense of like the, the rating system and what a children actually can do with their abilities and what they're allowed to do so the the first chapter um his sister was going to report him missing and then apparently the, the cover story is he's a secret agent key witness so mm-hmm and then him and Azuma have a moment. And then Tokyo has to get a registration card. And we find out that there's actually three classifications. Class A, uh, Class B, and then non-registered. Yeah. And then so the department allows Chosen to use their abilities for research and development for Class A. And Class B is for using your abilities and unavoidable, unavoidable situations. So, like, if life or death is happening, if you got to save somebody, if you're going to be hurt, basically, or your emotions yeah. get the best of you, and they just activate by accident. But yeah. even though Tokyo is going for a class B, we we know he's going to end up with a class A, right? Yeah, he could. So, so then we they also go and the main guy of the Yamato precinct or whatever, he asks some <laughs> questions and he answers her, her final question with like, my answer is money. 
he asked them what they would benefit from or what they want to benefit. But we found out Tokyo doesn't have dreams. any dream, dreams or aspirations. So I, I found that that was funny. I'm like, dang, he just out here going with the flow. And he was like, try, he actually was trying to come up. He didn't come up with an answer for dreams, but he was trying to come up with an answer for like, how does he want to benefit? And he was like, he wants to be helpful to Azuma. And I was like, isn't that to Azuma's benefit? <laughs> Yeah, so. but I have a I have a hot take on Azuma. Yeah, I would say we we kind of do see that the change where Tokyo is trying to be less dependent on him. Mm-hmm. So, so that's that's a plus. My man Azuma is on the baseball, basketball, soccer, and shogi teams. Well, he's he's in the clubs. Mm-hmm. And as far as we know, he hasn't shown any evidence of transforming into a chosen yet. It said that when you transform into a Chojin, it's like um, something to do with your desires, your deepest desires or some shit like that. Like, um, Shiozaki turned into a sinker Chojin because, you know, he was famous for his sinker ball. Um, Tokyo, I guess, looked at himself as a vulture and he became the vulture Chojin. Yeah. Um... Hot take on Azuma, I don't think he deep down has any desires or dreams. Just like Tokyo doesn't believe he has any. And that's why he is always pushing himself to do things like be on all these clubs and save people. Because he's looking for uh, a part of himself that I guess he can't find on his own. Yeah. So I th- I think he'll I think he'll transform when he has an epiphany. He might or he might not transform at all. I mean, it is possible. I don't know. That's kind of what I was thinking about when the first half. Because I was like, oh, he should be able to manifest something soon. But he didn't. So. But yeah, so the next chapter, the baseball guy, the ace picture turned Choden in the middle of the game. And Tokyo, I do I did have this funny part. Tokyo shows Ely how to use a phone. And then they talk about the habit dreams again. <laughs> and uh she said something to him that was off the wall funny. It was like, oh. Uh, so you don't have no dreams or something? I can't remember exactly now. It was something like, just be honest about it. If you don't have dreams, that's okay. Yeah. Or so. Yeah, so then... But she's so blunt. She is. I like her. Yeah. And then uh, the, the pitcher blows up soda machine to get a soda. So so that happens. And then he tells them he's, he has a Class A license and he's investigating soda pop. I can't go into details, which is a lie. And I did like how Ely, or, or Eli, I don't, I'm going to say Ely because it's more feminine, I guess. I think Could it's be a Ellie. Girl. Ellie, yeah, one of the two. Ellie, uh, she she has that, that roller scooter and she wants to give back to that kid. And then we find out the backstory of Shozaki. He wanted to take care of his brother and sister out of poverty. And they go away to confront him. And they head to to his abode in Southside. And Ellie runs into the sheep friend people she had, and they arrive at his house. And then I like this part. This is almost my flavor of the week when Ellie decided, she's like, I'm going to smoke them out. <laughs> yeah. They I open, can just yeah, they open it up, and then Tokyo realizes that um, he's just a... Uh, the guardian of his uh, siblings trying to take care of them. And then I like this part with Ellie because Tokyo's being sympathetic and she's like, Ellie gives no fuck. She's like, nah, he's still fucking up. Yeah. I, I like her. She's a good character. You get no simpy from me. Yeah, so... So that happens. Smoke him out. And uh, Shio Zaki's in a gang and they want him to use his powers, but he doesn't want to anymore. He says he needs a cool down it's hot the block is hot and they're like oh you look you think you think you're better than us you look down on us whatever then they jump him 
and he fully transforms and attacks the people, beats them up, and then attacks Tokyo when he arrives. So that was it for Chojin. I'm curious as to which way it will go into. I think there's only four more chapters so it's caught up. So we'll see. So yeah. Yeah, we'll see. It's it has my attention so far. It's a little a little better than uh than another show I was thinking about. Yep. Yep. I'm yeah, sure so. and I'm sure all of our listeners can guess what show that is. Shoot, Weak Hero. Well listen, but Weak yeah. Hero the Weak Hero <laughs> You didn't even make it far into Weak Hero. <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't do it. When I saw but chapter yeah. one, I was like, oh no, not for me. Yeah. So, Which is fair, because I did that with High School DXT. It was like, oh, no, not for me. Yeah, never seen that either. So Immediate tits. Immediate. Dang. Well, let's move on into Urumichi Onisan. Yeah. This episode, <laughs> Civility and Conscience. Yeah, this kid was like, oh, I think he just crashed pretty hard. Yeah, that was going to be our other flavor of the week. Please when... don't die, Onisa. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dang. So, Irumichi's more pumped up than usual. And and then the kid's like, oh, he's crashed. And then they're like, he tells the kids, he's like, once you get as old as Onisa, your, your brain already determines your mood for the day. And it's to keep you from going, going up past your limits. And the kids are like, I don't want to be that kind of grown up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dang. Which I never thought about it, but like, there just there are random times of the day where like you're like, man, I'm tired, or like I don't feel like doing this, or you just get grumpy, or your, whatever. Your men, your mental state really determines how you're gonna enjoy something in life. Yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, so. And then he was like, adults can run on fumes. I was like, dang. He's right, because I be running on fumes sometimes. Like, I just got to get through this, do this, and I'll be okay. And then he also tells the kids to go along to, to get things going that you got to do. And then he's like, yeah, I'm doing this to keep things running. And, and they were like, oh, so you don't want the business to run into the ground. I was like, dang, grind to a halt. I was like, ooh. This man spitting real facts. I feel like I need to be in the studio being taped. Yeah. My man Romichi just out here doing it for the kids, bro. Yeah, that's what he is. I I can't blame him. I did find it funny how uh Kumal Kun, not not Kumal Kun, the other the other guy uh, was like, Yeah, the force is gonna kick me out if I can't pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> he gave no fucks. So you still owe me money. It's like, oh I thought you yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, and I did find it was funny how Irmichi was oddly specific about kids being broke and losing money on pachinko. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, keep a budget and plan ahead, kids. Like, I, I thought man. it was hilarious when the random ass fat kid showed up and he's like, I want yeah. Uppy. And in, in, in his head, he's like, nope, abort. My back hurts yeah. just thinking about it. Yeah. And then he looks over, it's like, hey, it's the GM's grandson. And he's like, fuck. Yeah, that one, I was like, yeah, I felt that when he said, my back already hurts. <laughs> I, my my body does that now. I'm like, dang, I got to do this. I'm already hurting. So, Even though he seems like the usual, I feel like the bear guy, you've seen a different side of him in these couple episodes. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's seen the press and irritable. <laughs> yeah. And then... He was like civil. He was like um, civil or something. I can't pronounce it. It's like uh, doing what other people want, and you end up breaking your back. <laughs> and the kid says, uh, "Well, you're doing that. You're a uh, civil, or civil. I don't know." And he's like, uh, "Yeah, yep, that's yep, me. <laughs> yep, that's me. I'm breaking my back. This this big old grandkids on my back." But then, the, then my man, <laughs> the, the, my, my man my, the GM's granddaughter, I guess, was hitting on I Ikatetsu, I think his name. Ikateru. Ikateru. Yeah. And he completely he had rejected no her. Idea. He completely rejected her. And then she was like, 
oh, she didn't she didn't pursue um, payback or anything because her exact words were, "I can work for my snack." Like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, my man Ika too. <laughs> he might he might uh get him get him a little nice moment for himself. <laughs> so that was funny. And then we go. Iramichi does a brain test, and his brain test is 91. <laughs> he was 91 years old. But did uh, you saw what he was doing, right? Yeah, he was he's trying to win. <laughs> nah, he was trying to lose. It was like yeah, lose well, this match. Yeah, well he's supposed to he's supposed to lose, but in his mind he kept trying to win. Nah, uh, like I saw him try to and I saw him pick the wrong one. Yeah. Then I saw him pick a tie. And then I guess he picked the right one and I, it's just it was wrong no matter what he did <laughs> yeah he was just throwing so but yeah and the other funny part is when they had to draw their parents and then i was like i was like oh they're gonna draw bunny rabbits and bears and they end up on their own parents <laughs> and they just put and it put, looks uh, over it's like you guys are supposed to be furry woodly animals why do your parents look human and they're like oh, i was so deep in concentration of my parent my dad i forgot and then they just yeah. draw ears on him. Yeah, that was, that was funny. <laughs> but Oronichi's dad, bruh, oh my god. <laughs> His dad's uh, a tyrant, which the next episode kind of goes into it. So, yeah, he was trained him from a young age to be great. Yeah, my man said in somewhere in this episode, I don't even know where, he said, I asked for toys like every other kid, but I mostly got air mattresses and dumbbells. <laughs> Yeah, that was in the beginning. It, that's after the three year old kid talking about Santa. And then Ikatera was like, he was like, you had a you had a sloppy Santa too, because <laughs> all I got was music stuff and um, music stuff and whatever. He's like, but I guess that's the reason why I made it into musical school. And hey, he Udemichi still is just like, uh, yeah. And he still believes in Santa. I feel like he definitely does, because. Bear guy stopped Udamichi from asking him, you don't still believe in Santa, do you? Yeah. So so then um, we get to the merchandise man, Kaka, Kakaki or something, something weird. And then he's like, yeah, they all left him uh, at the first sign of inconvenience. I was like, dang, that's real life too. Shoot. And Irimichi gets tasked with inviting the new hires to the party. Well, before that, when we met the market marketing guy, merchant merchandising guy, he uh, taped Irimichi to the chair because he was like, they wanted me to do a life-size cutout of this thing, but it doesn't have feet. How lucky of me that the creator of the damn thing works here. Yeah. It's like, why are you taping me? Oh, it's just because to make sure you stay focused. And <laughs> people usually want to leave. Yo, my man yeah. said he was about to jump out the window over it. Yeah, I was never that serious. And then still. And then he was like, and then Uramichi was like, um, um you saw his heart opening it up to the guy, and then he said something, the dude's like. I specified my main girl walked out for a reason. I still got side girls. I'm not a loser. <laughs> and yeah, then the door like, shut. <laughs> I was like, man, ruthless. And then his heart shut. I was like, ooh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so then they talked about the one new hire, and he's like, I only, I'm only interested in, in 2D women. And I was like, dang. So... And then Ukatani, when she 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 can get a facial kit or beef, but her boyfriend talked about wanting some beef, so that's what she got. And she she don't even like the man, but she don't. She still want to make him happy, I guess. I feel like that's um, that's a life lesson in and of itself, right there, because she's like, I'm stuck or whatever. Like, don't get to your man like this, but she still is doing it. So it's like, when are you gonna get the strength to lead the man? And then Uramichi was fucking crushing his bingo card. He was like, I sense something bad about to happen. Yeah. And he gets a life-size doll bodysuit of that. <laughs> his nightmare. So. B 
because of what the the the, the bunny guy because of the bunny guy and it's like he has bingo and he's like nope nope and then um yeah. marketing guy m- merchandising guy so stuff like congratulations and which is like i don't want it and dude's like not my problem yeah <laughs> so then we go to the next episode sub-zero spiral uh this this episode felt lazy it did because it was just like the other episode <laughs> yeah which which was just done to me because the director it's the middle of summer you're like oh let's shoot a winter one it's like what what are you doing like you're just horrible at planning. Like it's so hot outside that a uh, steak and egg fry on the ground when it hits the ground. I'm like, oh okay. Like if th- that stuff fell out of that woman's bag and made a whole meal. So terrible. Yeah, I I feel I feel like it. It kind of they kind of have to do it this way just in order to like to make the episode funny or whatever. Because. If, if you think about it, if they did it when it was actually cold, then like everyone would be prepared for it. Versus, you know, when it's hot and they all have to use their acting skills per se. And then he kills me. He's like, oh, we use CGI again. I'm like, oh, man. But the other thing I thought about that was pretty funny when he, he'd ask him, like, what, what would you drink at this, this time? And they all like, ice cold beer, ice cold beer. And then Ikatera was like, I'd take a, I would do drink a cream soda. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it didn't really switch up from the summer video in the winter until Bear Guy literally put his sheet, uh, his suit on the director. Was yeah, fed up. And, and then the director uh, passed out. I did find it funny that he punched his previous director on two separate occasions. Uh, but then when you see the one of the reasons, I was just like, oh, well. Yeah, I fully agree with the reason. <laughs> and then the ugly girls. I hope he slapped them. Shoot. Yeah. I'm laughing and at then, the poor kitty getting kicked. Yeah. Well, hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so. <laughs> Why did you laugh like that? <laughs> it, nothing. But, uh, the kid, the kid's like, what's harassment? And Aaron Weechie's like, oh, that has a very strange definition. And then he explains, basically says it's when stuff's out of control. So. And they're like, is it okay to hit someone who's harassing blah, blah, blah? And you're just like, well, as long as you're aware that hurting someone is hurting you and you're prepared for that, then yeah, do as what you feel necessary. Yeah. And then I like how he said, um, basically it was a rule you shouldn't do things that if, if that, uh, you don't want done to you, want others to do to you. And then he also says, uh, sometimes people will need to be punched because they won't get it until they're actually punched. And I was like, oh, okay. Which he did that for Kamal Kuhn. So saying it's okay to, that he punched the director because the director had it coming to him. Nah, I don't think he cared that much. I think that was I... just him generally teaching the kid in the Urimichi way and Cause that's that's kind of like what happened with um Ikateru. That one episode where like he had the argument, and the two kids were fighting, and he just happened to be there to listen to Urumichi break up the fight. It's like sometimes you just gotta say sorry. I think, I think Urumichi, he was aware that the bear was listening, and I if you look back on it, some t- most of the time, it has his kind of answer kind of validates what his co-stars were trying to do, but says in a way that kids could understand, like, this is how an adult acts sometimes, and this is what they're actually trying to do. And then while he's doing that, Bunny Guy fucking falls asleep and wakes up. He's like, oh, shit, did he miss the cue? And Barrish is like, shut up, stay asleep for the rest of your life. Yeah. He was he was pretty funny. I did, did enjoy him. <laughs> But yeah, so we did that, did that. What we're moving next into, sir? We can do Tower of God or we can just jump into ReZero. I feel like you like to do ReZero last. So Bruh, I would do ReZero 24-7 if we could. I ain't got enough time in a day. You right. But yeah, 
I need to sleep for 12 hours. Um, yeah. I think that would mess up my whole day. What day? I don't need a day. But anyhow, so Tower of God, Season 2, Episodes 199 to 206. 199 Bam. to 206. Yeah. So Bam leaves to go back to the melting pot. And Rand gets called a kid and he starts fighting Hesse, the dirt man. And Shagrinsky tells them about the hunt station and how they put their their names on the line and unnamed people can't leave the place. They can leave once they reclaim their name. The person with the most names of the bosses is called the Kaiser. Rand tells him he doesn't understand why they want to steal names. He's like, don't you like your own name? Uh, and then he says, no name will ever sit, suit someone who doesn't value their own. I'm like, okay, Rand. So then my man takes a lightning pill and attacks. And this guy's made out of dirt, Hesse. So he can't, he's impervious to lightning. And then, so they all watching about, they realize that they know something about Ren and they figure out that he doesn't have much endurance from scouting him. And then Ren's like, you know what? I'm going to try this new attack. He did two days of theories of doing it. And then so he he basically gathers up Senshu and several bangs and then makes a grand electric pearl spear, which this was almost my other flavor. And chucks it at the guy and, and basically destroys him. And then we switch to one of the Kaiser's henchwomen, Alfing. And then Bam reaches the pot and he gets two days crash course with the pot person. And he tells him about how he got the power. And, and it's pretty much those who died unfairly. And he tells Bam, normal people can't accept power outside of their own fixed limits. And he tells him, you're special and infinite. And then he wants Bam to go after those people who have brought changes to the tower. My like man the out Jihad here doesn't and, like yeah. Thor. Yeah. Uh, Jihad and the leaders of the Ten Families and Ur Uric Manzino, Mazzino and Bam, he says they're... They're special. And Bam's like, huh, I never thought I was special. And then he wants Bam to change the tower that those that was ruined by those kids. Tells him to come back and bring only his true self. And then we find Flash to back to Rand's group. And we find that only a named operator can operate the floating island. And the only way to leave is to steal someone else's name or to reclaim your own. And we found out you have to be subdued for 10 seconds and touch their back to start the process. And then we find out servants are people who are ruled by a named person. Uh, the named person can grant a name that they have uh, stolen to someone. Uh, also stolen to a no name. And they're also masters. And it's pretty much a pyramid slavery scheme. And the name ones are equivalent to rankers. Then they get attacked by an observer and and Rand's group. Uh, they defeat them and they get to the lodge and they're safe for the time being. And my man Sokrinsky puts them all to sleep and wants to steal their names. And then Kun's other team shows up and cuts Sokrinsky in half. And then we find that Princess and Dorsey went to Mark to the octopus woman. She's a, a boss. And let's see. Yeah. We find out about Lydia and Sheila Jihad and how they're from Lopo Bia family. And they came up with a game to with Endorsey that they had to beat the the, the ten bosses and the Kaiser, and of course, a knack of them was like, nope, this is a whole trap, and Dorsey did it anyway. So, if they won, they would they wouldn't interfere with the knack anymore, and would hand over the life of uh, Lipo B Bia Rian. And there's a secret to the station, 
is actually a famous disposal facility for the 10 families. And the code word is like secret. It's like, bring me the Kaiser or something. Um, and it's pretty much how they get rid of regulars. And of the famous family, some of them get held for ransom, like their names, and then they give them, they give them the the option to buy their name back or whatever. So, and then we kind of find out that, and Dorsey fights Marta the octopus, and she's like, I don't even have a name to give you right now. And I'm like, oh, she doesn't have a name, which I was like, oh, who took her name? <laughs> and then, then we find out Kaiser invited her to meet and then challenged her to a duel, and she lost, and she better name on the duel. And Bam makes it back. My man, Bam. Yeah. And then, so, flash forward to the train again. People go to different routes. Rang, Wang Nan is going to stay on the train to hunt Casino. Wang Nan tells Kun his plan, and he's going to use himself for bait. Bam's like, okay, that's great if that's what you want to do. And Kun's like, Bam! I was like, oh, this might be the change of the guard, my man, Bam. Okay. That was also almost my flavor. And then Kun asks, what happened in the rice pot? And then he tells the story. Uh, so, Bam, his power, the entity, that he had the power to devour everything. And he told Bam he can absorb power from others and turn it to his own, and he will get stronger. And the power before was just a little snack that he had eaten up. But then he says, you're suited for the tower, Bam. And then he breaks the rice pot spell. And, it, and the guy's like, oh, he broke the spell all by himself. And then Bam says he's going to look for his own answers. And the twin found out twins work for the Kaiser. And then they reach the station. And they announce Bam as Juvio Grace, even though he's registered as Bam. So someone knows his identity, which we'll get to later. And a knack team forced the announcer to read Juvio Grace as part of their plan and tells them to say Bam has arrived to free people from the Kaiser. And so the Rand's team meets up with Bam and them outside the station, train station, and Zai calls uh, Boro a pervert because he likes the Dorsey. And... Yeah, he tells them they need him to be, he gives Bam a wig and, and tells them he needs him to be Jewel V8, uh, uh, VO for a while. And people come to worship Bam. They said he's their savior. And then they explain the festival where you have to get all 10 bosses before you can fight the Kaiser. And we find out that he specifically tells five of the Kaisers to hide. So you can't, you can't actually kill them. And we find out that Isu's team isn't actually trying to tempt them out of hiding, but they're going for the, they're trying to take over, not take over. They're going to threaten the existence of the station itself. So, and then they introduce the remaining five bosses and everyone comes and begs Bam to, to get their name back. <laughs> so, and this was one of the funny part. The four lords of Fug, uh, Sachi, Iwa, Horiyan, and Rack, and Monster Born in a, on a banana farm, <laughs> which, is, which is funny. So, that was funny. And the other part that got me was funny, too, was when Kun did his little glaring eyes at Gigi. And he's like, oh. And he says he's gonna kill Usa when he sees him. And then the yeah. Kaiser shows up. In his up. pocket says, "Cunt, my love." And he's like, "When I see yeah. you, I'll kill you." Yep. I was like, "Okay, yeah." And then so, Kaiser shows up. He's like, "Oh, bam! You look delicate. I thought you'd be tougher." And he's like, "Well, I guess you say the same for me because I'm a woman." And then just request a match with Bam. And Kaiser has unseen unseen weapons. It's possible it's a invisible inventory and then Dorsey shows up and says Bam her are a couple and then she whisks him away on bonk bonk 
She said, that's my man, and I'm taking him. Yeah. And then uh, the area f- sword fighter thinks Rack is a Slayer nominee. And everyone, they're talking, everyone just beats up on each other. And Kun tells Adore she, she fell into a trap, and they, she smacks him. And they flash back to Rack, and Anita, Arya are going to fight. And Dorsey tells Bam the Kaiser is from one of the ten families, and she was going to be a princess, and then the plan fell through for whatever reason. And she gets all seductively up in Bam's face. Yeah. Like, yeah, kind of out because they were on the they were on the the bed. And she leaned over. And I was like, yeah, you're kind of kind of weird. What you doing, girl? Lap on him and everything. Yeah, I was like, that's weird. And then so not really. She's she's I mean, she was drawn to Bam. I mean, in the sense of you're conveying information, like you don't need to be like that conveying information. And, so and, like, and Dorsey's been trying to win Bam from Rachel for like, I don't know yeah. how long now, but it's been a while. Yeah, so um, he tells her that they're going to end up being rivals. And then Dorsey's like, well, I'm going to force you to be my server anyway. And then Kun has to fight his way to leave out of the room when he was talking with Hats and Isu and Kun fights Hats. I'm like, okay, Kun, I see you, Kun, fighting, doing all stuff. And then he basically gets out after they do one of those swordsmen class swords at the end of the movie kind of thing where there's only one survivor. But they both survive. So uh, so then Kun barges in on Dorsey, and I'm not sure if he stopped her from touching Bam's back for longer than 10 seconds. I'm not sure, because it didn't seem that long. But I don't know. That didn't really count either. And Bam's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to the floor for Rachel. He's like, I'm going to go learn about the Thorn and non-regulars and find out about myself. Mm-hmm. And then Dorsey, Dorsey gives him ultimatums like, Rachel or me by 5 p.m. tomorrow. And then Kaiser tells the 10 bosses to invade the no-name area, get get Bam's companions before they join forces, and he's going to put them up for auction. And Rat looks like he might be losing. But I did think it was weird that the area, um, the Aria, Anita, Anetta, whatever, like, it's not, the, she doesn't look like white, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's actually a person that came from there or they got disavowed or they just look different for some whatever reason. See, so. I I like the conflict between the two groups of friends cause, because in Dorsey got her name taken, Ibisu wanted to use Bam to get it back, completely assuming it was okay to use Juvo Graves because by this point you realize Ibisu is the one who name-dropped Bam's fug name. Yeah. And then, like, come to find out, hey, we need the name. You should have done that. Piss off now. Yeah. But I feel like there's going to be a way where they can get the name and they get the name back. Because isn't it when you, when you, if you get someone, you get their names and all the names that they got. So it's like, oh, you get to give and Dorsey her name back. Nah, I, I, would need a, I would need a refresher. I'm not too sure. Yeah, well, that's that's how I was reading it. That that um, as as long as you don't kill the person, you have to you have to subdue them, and then the servants become your servants after you take their name. Mm. So, so I'm like, okay, yeah. So if Bam wins, he can give her back her name. <laughs> so I'm like, it's it's like, why are y'all tripping? Y'all don't need the name. Y'all just. Wanted to fight someone that day for no reason. So they woke up and chose violence. They did violence. It's not the answer, kids. But yeah, so it's going well. A hey. enjoying it. Yeah. And now your 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 brainchild re zero. Yo, it's time for the main event. Re fucking zero. Shoot. Yeah. So, start it off. I'm just wondering if ReZero exists to confuse people. 
because we started off with the two people that I've never seen before, and then you realize it's the sword hero and the old guy. I was like, aw. And it was mm. like, um, the whale showed up and released a vocal shockwave that, like, kind of scared everyone. And we find out that Crochet has a range of swords, so she can attack from anywhere she wants. And send, like, Almost a... anywhere. Eh, pretty much anywhere. She, she has a, um, she, she does have a limited distance. She, so. yeah, you're right, she does. We found out later on that there is yeah. a distance, there is a cap. Yeah, because she was like, oh, I could, that's almost, that's out of my distance or something, she said later. Because I was like, oh, she's like, I have a limitless sword. But then, then while they're fighting the whale, it looked like the whale had a cursor above its head. Like it was like a in-game enemy. And yeah. old guy was fucking tearing up the whale. And then um Ricardo <laughs> Ricardo, I thought he was gonna stab it in the eye, but no, he just he just cut off a tooth. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck was what was the point of that, Ricardo? I, I don't I don't think that attack amounted to anything at the end of the day. Yeah, it, it kind of the whole the whole whale. The, I guess the whales, they they I think they said it fur, <laughs> which is also weird. But like it kind of dampens magical abilities and such. So I think only like physical attack attacks are the most effective. Work, yeah, yeah, are the most effective. And then, um, the old guy actually cuts the eye out of the damn whale, and I was like, "Damn, bro, you didn't have to cut it out." <laughs> you had to. They're enemies. And the whale said, fuck that smokescreen attack and admitted the fog. And I'm wondering why. So, um, Subaru realizing they can't see the whale, but the best way to attract him is to attract the whale to him. So he goes off with Rem and does the thing where the witch, the witch tries to kill him and he gets the witch's scent heavier. Yeah. I'm wondering why the witch didn't kill Rem. It killed I was thinking that too. Yeah, it killed Amelia. And like this time her actual like shadow presence whispered in his ear or something. And I'm like, why didn't it kill Rem? Is it maybe because Rem's an ogre? I don't know. But um yeah. and then I was wondering why Subaru didn't seem concerned with the possibility of Rem dying. You think I, I kind of looked like he just was, like, talking to himself. Like, he wasn't trying to talk at Rem, so I don't know if he needs to have word or something towards someone, so. But he's talked about it to himself multiple times. Yeah, and it it's just... So what made this time it, different? It just went to himself this time. Like, the, the time he was going to tell Amelia why. Like, oh, this is why I I can't do something, and then... They're like, oh, we're going to keep talking? Dead. So that's why they killed her. And then we end the episode with three whales. No, I think it just showed two at the end. Yeah. And it's, it's like, something. oh, shit, there's more than one? That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. So then my oh, man, man Subaru, he figures out that the whale split itself. And the old man, he also figured out that the old man wasn't dead because he got swallowed up by the whale. And he's like, nah, if, we, if we're if we quick enough, we can probably cut him out of the stomach. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I was like, not really sure what happened with the witch. But I do know that Subaru got a face full of Rem's uh, tits. Yeah. Because he was up there. He was doing his thing. And they definitely made Rem's tit seem bigger at the at that scene. Yeah. And then um, they come out with the bright idea. It was like, oh, you get you from the earlier episode drawing on the tree is like foolish and like it's a sacred tree. You don't do that. Oh, so let's fucking cut the fucking thing down and have it land on the whale. Yeah, that was a whole tree. Yo, that tree gone. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. And then the Did... old man 
he put the whale to rest. He went to town on the whale and like kept stabbing it and shit until it was dead. And we found out that he's never once said the words he loved her until that moment. And yeah. I thought that was kind of crazy. I was just, bruh, what? Yeah, sometimes you can't be afraid to tell someone you love them. And then at this point, I, I was kind of thinking Cruchet was starting to like Subaru, like, like him, like him. But she then confirmed, like, nah, my heart lies elsewhere. And then Subaru and Rem have a moment, and I'm just like, Subaru, stop making Rem love you. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Did you catch how Subaru was like, yeah, I, only, I already have a number one and two in my heart. Yeah, I was just like, bro, what what is wrong with you? I was like, a number one and two. Dang. And then, like... I wonder who they are, though. The Cruchet takes her crew and, like, the whale's head to, I guess, her kingdom or whatever. And decides to give Subaru some help for the witch's coat. But then we see Subaru finally realizes that Julius is with the people coming towards his way and that ends that episode. Yeah. So <laughs> we go into the next episode and Julius is like, uh, it'd be shameful for a night to be a part of this. So just call me Jules. It's like, bro, what? Yeah. And then, um, he called, uh, super pretty ambitious for a weakling. Yeah. And then, like, um, they actually get to the witch's cult, and Subaru is provoking Pedagoose, and he's actually doing a pretty good job doing it. And I realized that Pedagoose is actually batshit crazy, and there might not be any actual weight to his words calling uh, Subaru pride and believer of love and shit like that. Yeah. I think he... And I kind of had the sense, like, he kind of knew Subaru or something. Like, they're connected somehow, but it, I didn't... It was weird, yeah. And, like, you figured that, like, what he says isn't bullshit because, you know, the witch is power and shit like that. Witch is cult, I mean, and yeah. Subaru's cursed by the witch somehow. Because I, I feel like he, like, he knew, like, he'd never seen him as a lover boy because he hadn't did anything lovey in that episode. That, that's what I'm saying. When he showed up, so I was like... It Does he weird. also have? Yeah, so. And then, so, um, thus the slops, the slops in was cut in half, and I actually didn't believe he was dead. Um, I forgot that I wrote that down, and I'm glad that it turned out that I was right, because it seems that the crazy bitch that showed up later and killed about four or six people was also Petal Goose in a different body. And at first I thought she was just like a, a ultra-devoted disciple of his, but then she was looking for the the gospel in her robe that Subaru had, and he, she was like, you must have taken it, didn't you? I'm like, oh, wait. It's just him in her body, or her in her body, or it in her body. And now I don't know what the fuck the sloth sin is. <laughs> Yeah. And, like, I don't think Petal Goose is dead. I don't know. I kind of, I feel like love is, like, the witch's stench. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, like, that's what they're equating their love to. It's like, oh, the witch's stench is all over you, so she loves you. And and the, the, the gospel is, like, the whole proof that they belong to the witch's cult, and it's, like, their sacred text. So I, I don't know. So, like, old man, like, basically told Subaru, it's like, don't get stronger, but you got to be strong. You know, he accomplished a lot, and, like, he still got more to accomplish. And then we decide to move on forward, but everyone fucking disappears. And then you see Rom with a hoodie, and then it ends. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Again, what the fuck is going on? Why does ReZero insist on making me confused? Yeah. Is the whale dead? Is the whale not dead? Did people disappear because the whale's not dead? I don't understand. Did they kill the whale? That's my. That was the first thing I went to. It was like, is the whale dead? Yeah, I, I, I think that, um, was it Rom shows up because they did something with the barrier that's supposed to be there, and I think she sensed the barrier. Someone was approaching the barrier, so I don't know. Where'd the other guys go? 
I have no idea. It might be one of those that, just, that get on to like the, the witch's cult scent or, or the witch's scent type stuff. I don't know, that, man. I'm fucking confused. Yeah. yeah, specifically targets the witch's scent. I, I don't feel, know. I feel like every time we watch three episodes, the third episode is where I have the most questions. You have a whole lot of questions. Question my existence every single day. Well, damn, Irby. Maybe you need to restart by death. Nah. It doesn't I'm work. I'm okay. Nah, it don't work. <laughs> this ain't anime world. Oh, man. Nah. But nah. Nah, I don't do that. But yeah, so. How Zero, I wish to be isekai I don't. Uh, nope. No, thank you. <laughs> Fuck it, man. Think I won't be a savior of some world I don't even know where people probably would hate me. Nah. I'm cool. As long as they ain't a mouth for me. He might be. Might be worse than uh, now for me. Hey, just listen. You ain't got no suck. control over this. <laughs> you right. Shoot. Yeah. Got anything you want to go out on? Nah. I'm, I ain't got nothing. All right, guys. Till next week on Herbal Synergy. I-R-B-A-L-S-I-N-E-R-G-Y. You can catch us on YouTube, Spotify, um, Google Podcasts, all that good shit. Like us, support us, spread us, and we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace.